This is a true story that happened a couple of years ago, when Tinder was the go-to place for online dating. My experience with Tinder, or should I say with this one individual, was at first a friendly and flirtatious experience turned fatal, the further things went. It all started when I was doing night classes at my local community college. At the time, I was studying to get my degree in nursing, so you can imagine the monotonous lectures that the course entailed. I would usually take pictures of my friend's notes so that I didn't have to take notes during lectures. Instead, I would go on Tinder. I was single at the time and figured I could pursue a boyfriend since December was considered cuffing season. I remember messaging this attractive guy who I'll call Ryan for the sake of this story. Ryan was my type of guy, handsome and someone who enjoyed the nature and wildlife. From his profile pictures, I could see him holding a machete while wearing camo attire. After our initial match, I got to know Ryan a lot more and found out that he was a huntsman who also enjoyed fishing on his days off. Nonetheless, his good looks and charm gave me good vibes that the other guys on Tinder didn't. We had messaged back and forth for about a week or two, and even video chatted occasionally. My friends and school colleagues suggested I give him a shot at a first date, but I felt like I wanted to take things slow and steady. This is when things took a dark and unexpected turn. One night, my best friend Jenna sends me a link of Ryan's personal Facebook page. As I opened his page up on my desktop computer, I see that he was currently in a relationship with another female of Hispanic descent. I began to act irrational and bombarded him with texts saying stuff like, Why the hell would you lead me on if you're still in a relationship? I saw your Facebook, buddy. Not even 10 seconds later, Ryan responds back saying, I was planning on breaking up with her to be with you. I didn't want to be known as a homewrecker but he was too irresistible to let go of, considering how much in common I had with him. I messaged back, saying, So you're willing to break up with her to be with me? Yes, I'll break it to her later tonight. How will she take the news? Sometimes you just gotta kill him with kindness. After an awkward turn of events, I shut off my computer, put my phone on silent, and headed to bed while brushing the whole notion under the rug that I was going to end a relationship and potentially gain one simultaneously. The next morning, I woke up and checked my cell phone on my nightstand. I remember seeing two missed messages from Ryan. I opened them up and saw an image of his girlfriend, except she was bloodied. A good portion of her face was severed off with a second message that read, Done. After the alleged homicide circulated the news, it was later found out that Ryan had taken his girlfriend's life with his hunting machete. What makes this story more disturbing was how I recall Ryan explicitly saying he was going to quote unquote kill his girlfriend with kindness prior to breaking up with her. Little did I know that his hunting machete was named kindness. Never in a thousand years did I ever expect to experience such a disturbing encounter during a date. A date that I'm now reminded of every time I stare at my reflection. The scars that remain on my face only reflect my scars from the outside, but don't project the scars from the inside. The brutality in the hands of this certain individual left me seeking professional counseling. I find it difficult to erase the image of the individual's face from my memory, as it still sends shockwaves through my anatomy. Maybe sharing my story with the world will help close this horrific chapter of my life. It all started a couple years ago, when the dating app Tinder first launched. I remember seeing all of my friends download the app as it was the new trend when it came to online dating. I've used other dating apps in the past, but never really got too far in the dating scene besides a nice meeting you text or a hundred dollar bill after a lunch date. There was this one occasion when I got home from a long day of school. I remember face planning on my bed the moment I stepped foot inside my room. I had just finished midterms and felt the sudden urge to blow off some steam, 
and perhaps go out later that night. I grabbed my cell phone and began messaging my friends in our group chat saying, Yo, anyone down to chill later? A couple of minutes go by and I get a few replies saying something to the effect of, Not today with girlfriend, or got a Tinder date tonight. This was incredibly frustrating, as I felt like I was slowly becoming the one single friend in my entire friend group. I felt like my social skills and dating life were slowly diminishing the longer I stayed home and didn't go out. That's when I decided to log onto my desktop computer and create a new Tinder profile. After a couple of minutes of typing out a witty personal bio, I started uploading old photos to my profile. I made sure to also download the app on my phone while making myself comfortable on my living room couch. I remember swiping through the app for a few minutes and seeing dozens of attractive females. Due to my previous encounters regarding dating apps, I knew not to trust the pictures within the girls' profiles as some of them could turn out to be catfishes more often than not. During the latter part of my evening, I was waiting patiently to match with any girls on Tinder. My dad always told me to shoot my shot with as many girls as possible. That way, the probability of hooking up with one would be higher than the average guy. I recall swiping right and liking at least 100 girls' profiles on Tinder. Out of the hundreds of girls, I surprisingly got no matches back. I couldn't help but feel my self-esteem gradually deplete. I didn't want to sour the rest of my day, so I decided to put my phone down and watch some TV for the remainder of the evening. My anxiety began playing tricks on me as I truly convinced myself that I was going to be single forever. The room suddenly became silent despite the television still remaining on. My eyes started getting heavy the longer I stared at the TV. I began picking at the armrest of my sofa while trying to blow off some steam. Feelings of anxiety weighed heavy on my shoulders. Am I really gonna die single? Does anyone want to be with me? That's when I hear a notification sound coming from my phone. I grabbed my phone and noticed it was a match from someone on Tinder. As I opened up the app, I noticed a female of Asian descent. She didn't have many pictures on her profile, just one picture with the name Tina. From the looks of it, she seemed fairly attractive and was roughly around the same age group as I was. The bio on her profile was straight to the point. I remember it saying something along the lines of, The hotter twin sister, you should date me. I found the description rather odd, but brushed it off as I just wanted to get some action that night. That's when she sent a direct message to me. I opened up the message which read, I'd love to talk in person if you're free. With a smiley emoji. I was surprised at how forward she was. Her location said she lived about 15 kilometers away which translated to about a 10 minute drive from my house, give or take. I figured meeting up with this girl wouldn't be much of an inconvenience considering how close she was. I sent a message asking for her contact information. She then responds with her fully disclosed address and phone number. Again, I was taken aback by how forward she was with her contact details. I began speculating if she was a catfish or not. Nonetheless, I brushed the notion under the rug and decided to respond back with, Cool, be there in an hour. As I made my way to the washroom for a quick shower, my entire body began feeling antsy. I couldn't help but feel genuinely excited as if I was going on a first date again. That's when I hear another notification sound coming from my phone. I checked my phone and saw another match coming from Tinder. Could this be my lucky day? I wondered. I clicked on the profile and noticed it was Tina, except the name on the profile said Lena. As I read her bio, I could see it was similar to Tina's profile saying, The hotter twin sister, you should date me. The distance next to her name was also 15 kilometers. Could it be? This has to be the twin she was talking about. Speculations began running through my head. I made the assumption that Tina and Lena were both twin sisters considering the identical similarities in names, appearance, and location. It seemed like the pair had a pretty petty relationship with one another based on the way they were outing each other on their bios. She then messages me as well saying, Don't date my sister Tina, date me instead. 
I couldn't help but feel amused at the notion that I literally had twin sisters fighting over me that I hadn't even met yet. Not really considering if this was a good idea or not, I decided to entertain it by saying, How about we all go on a triple date? Lena then responds with, Fine, but you better like me more. My mind was racing. I couldn't believe I was going to potentially hook up with two attractive looking twins. Something on every guy's bucket list. That being said, I grabbed my car keys and made my way inside my vehicle. I punched in the address on Google Maps and started driving towards the destination. About 10 to 15 minutes later, I arrived there and saw a fairly small house surrounded by a lot of trees. The house honestly looked like a shack that you would put storage in. I casually make my way onto the porch and began knocking on the door. I remember hearing faint noises of heavy footsteps making their way towards my direction. As I heard the door locks beginning to open, I popped a breathman in my mouth to give a good impression. The door began to creak open, and there stood a girl with two heads attached to her body. If I recall the politically correct term, they were conjoined twins. The girl on the right then introduced herself, saying, I'm Tina, also known as the Hotter Twin, and here is my uglier half, Lena. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Anyway, I'm Lena. You must be Jeff, right? Uh, yeah. Come inside so we can get this party started. I honestly contemplated on booking it, as it was clear as day that I'd been catfished, but I decided to take the high road and continue with the date, so I said, Uh, sure, ladies. As I made my way inside, I couldn't help but notice how well kept the place was. There were even three plates of steak prep sitting on the dining room table. I felt a little relieved I didn't split the scene, as I would have lived to regret leaving the twins high and dry despite all their efforts. We all began to walk towards the table. I sat on one side while the twins sat across from me. An awkward essence filled the room as I couldn't believe who I was currently on a date with. If I had to be honest, I couldn't muster up an appetite despite how delicious the meal looked. Tina held the steak with a fork in place while Lena began slicing it into bite-sized pieces. I sat there watching with my jaw hanging from my face as the twins started feeding themselves with their respective hands. I genuinely don't mean to be rude, but it was the most bizarre thing to watch considering it wasn't expected. Tina then says, Why aren't you eating your steak, Jeff? I worked on it all day. Leave him alone. He doesn't want to eat your shitty cooking. I didn't ask you, idiot. I wish we were separated. I can't stand you. Psh. At least I don't have to share the same brain as you. Girls, please stop fighting. I'm just a little full from the food I had earlier. Who do you think's hotter? Me or her? I'm not here to pick favorites, Tina. He obviously likes me more. There's a reason why I was born on the right side. Because I'm Mrs. Wright. Condescending bitch. Girls! If you don't stop, I'm leaving! The tension in the room got very uncomfortable. Both twins began to mean mug me while holding a knife in one hand and a fork in the other. I could hear nothing but pin drops as the room suddenly became silent. Tina then slams her clenched fist on the table while holding the fork in her palm, saying, <laughs> You're not going anywhere, Jeff. <laughs> what are you talking about? The twins then got up from their chair and began approaching my direction. I began leaning back the closer they got to me. Ladies, can you please put the knife and fork down? As I looked into their eyes, I could see them both filled with rage, while Lena's had a hint of concern within them. Tina then abruptly takes a swipe across my face with the fork in her hand. Ow! What the hell is your problem? Get the hell away from me or I'm calling the cops! I sat in my seat flabbergasted while trying to subdue the blood dripping down my face. Lena then says, Why did you do that? If you go to jail, they're gonna put me in there with you, you idiot! Good. Not only will we be close physically, but we'll also be close emotionally. <laughs> Lena then begins stabbing Tina across her face and neck repeatedly. I sat there in disbelief while being showered in their blood. As Lena continuously stabbed Tina, I saw her eyes beginning to slowly roll in the back of her head as the pair abruptly collapsed on the floor.
I'd started using Tinder just a few weeks prior. I hadn't expected it to work, but within a short time, it seemed to be proving fruitful. One day, I saw this super hot chick right in my area. She was just my type, and she had plenty of great photos on her profile. To my surprise, we matched pretty quickly. We started texting on and off throughout the week. She always took a while to respond, but I figured she was just playing hard to get because all of her texts were heavily flirtatious, saying out-of-pocket things like, Hey there, Mr. Man. You look pretty hot. Wanna make out with me? I really wanted things to go to the next level, so I played along. I pulled out all the stops, using all the pickup lines and wit I had. You know, I'm gonna take you out first. Gotta treat a classy girl like you, right? Things got rather heated pretty soon. How about I just give you a time and a place, and you just do me right? I'll be there. Eventually, after about a week, we traded phone numbers and I got her to agree to go out on a date. She said she really wanted to go to the movies. I didn't really care where we were, as long as I finally got to meet her. I arrived at the theater around the start of the previews, but she'd already texted me that she was inside. I'm way up at the very top, XOXO. When I made my way to the top row, I saw a girl sitting by herself. She didn't look exactly like the photos from her profile, but still, she was cute. I figured it was just too dark in the theater to tell, and she had the right brunette hair, so I introduced myself on the steps. Hey there, lovely. Mind if I take a seat? Excuse me? Who are you? I'm Aaron. From Tinder? Uh... I think you got the wrong girl. Uh, my bad. Sorry about that. I looked around the theater for another girl sitting alone, but there was hardly anyone in there. Well, there was nobody except her. She was waving at me from the other side of the row. Even in the dark, I could see enough. As she flailed her arm around, a hefty baggage of fat, flabby skin jiggled around her elbow. Her waist bulged over the armrests of her seat, and she had about $50 of concessions cluttered around herself. I gulped and reluctantly walked over to her. I already knew I'd been severely catfished, but I put myself to just getting through the movie and then never talking to her again. Hey, hot stuff. Um, hi. Once I got close, I noticed even more disgusting details. She looked older and more wrinkled than my grandma, which just made all the folds of fat that much more numerous. She barely had any hair left on the top of her head, except for a few greasy white wisps, but she made up for it with a scraggly beard nestled between a few of her chins. What I wanted to do was vomit, but I sat down despite myself. Immediately, she grabbed my hand from my leg and clenched it with an iron grip. She pulled me towards herself and whispered into my ear. How'd you like to go all the way tonight, baby boy? Uh, I don't know. I- Oh, are you nervous, sweetheart? Not as bold as you are in your texts, hmm? Well, how about we start with a little kiss? I wanted to leave so bad, but I was hung up on getting my money's worth out of the ticket. She was still squeezing the life out of my hand licking her lips and letting food spill out of her mouth. I don't think so. How about we just enjoy the movie? Oh, come on. Aren't you a player? Get over here. She puckered up and pulled me in even further. I tried to wriggle myself free, but she grabbed my face with her other hand and held me still as she kissed me with her Funyun breath. She forced her way into my mouth and then bit my tongue. When I tasted blood, something juiced me with extra adrenaline. I punched her in the face and jumped out of my seat. But something was still biting my tongue, pulling it out of my mouth and hanging off my chin. I looked down. It was her dentures, yellowed and covered in food and still clenched onto me. Ah! I ripped them off and threw them to the floor. Out of grabbing distance, I looked back at her, utterly stunned. Where are you going, baby boy? She tried to stand up, knocking several empty snack cartons onto the floor, but she didn't get anywhere. She was wedged into her seat by the girth of her hips. It was like watching a train wreck. 
I couldn't look away. When she finally twisted and heaved herself out of the seat, she immediately collapsed to the floor, then started crawling towards me, rambling unintelligible gibberish. She didn't get very far before she got stuck in the cramped space of the aisle. Suddenly, she started screaming in rage, kicking her feet hopelessly and swiping at me with her meat hooks. You really let yourself go. How embarrassing. I couldn't stand to look at her any longer. I got the heck out of there before anyone else showed up. And really, I needed to get home and wash my mouth out with bleach. Hey, hot stuff. Um, hi. How'd you like to go all the way tonight, baby boy? Uh, I, I don't know. I... Oh, are you nervous, sweetheart? Not as bold as you are in your text, hmm? Well, how about we start with a little kiss?